over the next few weeks, we're gonna transform this shipping container into a self-sufficient off-grid tiny home that is completely portable. A bathroom, kitchen, off-grid power system, air conditioning, we've got our work cut out for us, so let's get building. The container is here, guys. Oh my gosh, those gooseneck trailers can turn so sharp, it's crazy. Yeah, that's actually probably good right there. We don't want it too close. Nice job. North Idaho gets a lot of snow and rain. We've decided that a roof structure over the top is going to be the best way to protect our investment. Honestly, I can't figure out how to get down. <laughs> well, first we need to level the container. We need to get this container level so we can build our roof structure. I measured three inches out over four feet, which should mean about 15 inches out over the 20 foot length. Come on, Dad. That's pretty close. Do you know how we got it perfectly level? How? Because I had the appropriate footwear on. <laughs> Your heavy equipment slippers. That's not going anywhere. Before we can start on our roof structure, we need to build our porch frame that the posts for the roof structure are gonna tie into. So, Cordy, are you ready for some heavy lifting? I thought that's what the skid steer was for. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, nice. That was all Courtney's idea. I can't believe that worked. Perfect. The hardest part is getting started and we're about to get started, which means we're over the hump. It's all downhill from here. No, uphill. <laughs> so if I can cut this miter accurately, then I can use the same angle cut for the next piece. So I'll cut this one at an angle and then this one straight and that'll give me two pieces and I only have to make two cuts instead of four cuts. This is a portable bandsaw. I really like to use these because they're quiet, they don't make a huge mess, and they can make really accurate cuts. The downside is, well, what we're seeing now, and it's that it just doesn't have a big enough throat to actually cut tubing this big. Bam, one part down. Okay, so this goes like this. The other one goes on the other side, and then we need to miter this to go in the middle between them. Wait, it's only a 16 foot tape measure. <laughs> we should have bought a 16 foot container. It's spring in North Idaho, which means I think we're gonna be battling the weather for most of this build, but it's a great excuse to go take lunch. Talking about therapy is something that I never thought I'd be doing. To be honest, I thought that therapy only worked if you were broken. But after college, I started to feel like I could use some help. I didn't like the way that I was coping with stress and it was taking a toll on me and my relationship with Courtney. I tried to go into my first session open-minded, but I really thought that I was going to leave saying, well, at least I gave that a shot. That was four years ago and I can honestly say that therapy has changed my life. I'm a better listener and I'm able to communicate my needs way more effectively. It's allowed me to strengthen relationships with friends, family, and colleagues and be way more supportive of Courtney during our first year of parenthood. Seeing a therapist in person can be really difficult with a busy schedule and that's why for almost two years now we've been using BetterHelp. 
And with that, I'd like to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who's trained to listen and give you helpful advice. Getting started might feel like the hardest part, but it doesn't have to be. Simply go to betterhelp.com forward slash ambition strikes and answer a few questions about yourself. In most cases, you'll be matched to a therapist in 48 hours, and then you can start communicating by phone call, video chat, or messaging. It's about what works best for you. I've even done a session while sitting in the excavator. If you'd like to add a few more tools to your personal toolbox, get started today by heading to betterhelp.com forward slash ambition strikes or clicking the link in the description below. And you'll even get a discount on your first month. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Oh gosh. You good? Yeah. <sighs> I think it's funny that we're about to weld on a container that we've never even been inside of. Oh my god! We've never opened the doors. This is a one tripper container. That means that it's only been used to transport cargo one time, probably to get it into the United States. The theory behind it is that we're able to make sure that nothing hazardous has ever been transported in this or spilled because you wouldn't want to live in that. And also it usually means that they're straight and dent free and so it just looks a lot nicer. What's inside door number one? It still smells like fresh paint inside. How much header do you have? Can yeah. you touch the ceiling? Did you know that one of the most Googled things about me on the internet is how tall am I? How tall are you? I don't know. I like to keep people guessing. <laughs> that was actually pretty easy. Are we good or are we lucky? Bottom of this, even with, ha oh, ha, look at that. Do you think this thing can roll in the gravel? Yeah, I think from here on out, we just use flex core. Oh yeah, look at the bubble, babe. That's pretty darn good. Feels pretty strong. I guarantee you the internet is already skeptical of this. That's good, because I'm skeptical of this. Oh yeah, no, it's sturdy. Step one, done. Next step, start on the roof trusses. I had a revelation last night and I changed how we were doing the entire roof structure. The next step is to make these pieces right here that are going to support the roof. I wrote some illegible notes and we're gonna go measure once and cut twice. We're about 73.1. That's probably okay. Okay. This is called a dry cut saw. It's really similar to an abrasive chop saw, but it spins at a slower RPM and it uses this carbide tipped blade. It makes much faster, cleaner cuts than an abrasive wheel does and the saw blade also lasts a lot longer but it makes a racket. It is super, super loud and sends super hot, hot little shards everywhere. That's why I'm already wearing earmuffs. <laughs> Courtney gets the earmuffs on before I even get the saw out. Okay, ready? Aim. You're busted. Why? Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> Peanut butter cookies. <laughs> this here is the tube we just cut, and we need to cope or notch it around the top of the container. Lunch of Champions is ready. Cheesy bread. Oh my god. 
gosh, Gordon, thank you. That was good. We went round and round on where to build this container. I wanted to build it in place. Courtney thought it would be a good idea to build it right out here in front of the shop. And I think she was right because like, now we get to work in the shop. We have all of our tools, we have all of our stuff. I think it's gonna make the build process way quicker, way more fun, way easier, but we are gonna have the huge challenge of moving it into place once it's done. I'm about to hoist the heavy welder up onto the roof of the container. Three, lift with your back and high bricks under knees. It's still plugged in, it's still plugged in. Your job is to manage the cord. Okay, made it on the way for the container. It was raining when I started welding that together, and now it's full blue sky sunshine. I got a tiger by the tail. <laughs> that grinder is at a really rough flight. That looks so good. Thank you. I'm pretty stoked with those roof lines. So looks awesome. in the spirit of being excited about the way it looks, I want to do the porch cover now. I think it's done raining, but I've thought that about six times today. Just set, set your hand down. Uh, this is going to go like... Well, that looks awesome. Yes. You turn this bad boy down a hair. How are we gonna do this, Courtney? I thought you had a plan. No, I don't. Courtney and I only have four hands, and for this project, we need eight hands. So what we're gonna do instead is clamp this piece here like this, so then we can set the other one on top of it. Oh, but I didn't bring a clamp, Courtney. Right, yeah, now we can set that on there. Okay. You just hold that for a second, and then grab the welder now. Ready for this one? Yeah. I hope it reaches, cause like what? Oh no! Oh my gosh! I think that won't fall. Woo! You good? Yeah. Like yeah, you're good, I'm or good. or only yeah? Let me know when you want me to set it down. Yeah, set it down. Okay, I'm gonna attack this. Like this, since we built the deck. Can you push this way on this? As long as nothing falls on my head. Yep, okay, let go. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. It looks so good. Isn't that awesome? We've gotten a ton done. Like, we were way ahead of where I expected to be by now. It was a really productive day, and it's so fun to see our designs coming to life, and I can't wait to keep working on this tomorrow. Yep, so we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm going to tell you the story of why we are building this, because it's actually a surprise for someone very special. My original plan and what I bought steel for was to have a third truss section right in the middle. But as we were building it, I started to feel like that was excessive and we didn't need it anymore um, until I did this. So I set this beam up to simulate the current design with unsupported span of 20 feet and then I stood in the middle and I was very surprised with how much it deflects. It goes all the way down until it touches the trailer floor. And given our snow loads in our area, I just don't think this is strong enough. So we're gonna have to add that third truss section like I planned from the beginning, like I should have done all along, which means that we're not quite done with our roof framing. I 
I am struggling with this one. It's like every time I tack it, it moves because when I stand over here on the roof of the container, the whole container roof moves. So I think I need to just tack it in two spots, put this one on, get it level, tack it at the top, and that should hold everything where it goes. All right, done on the roof uh, for now. I really don't want another post right here. We're gonna have a bunch of windows on this side of the container and I think that post in the middle would just totally ruin the look. So instead, I'm going to try to cantilever this last roof truss out by then making a kicker that goes back to the container. All I have now is scraps. Like I am down to just a little pile of scraps. I hope my plan works. I hope this piece is long enough and we're about to find out. Time for more creative rigging because we need to put the third roof structure piece on. And I think Riley has a plan that isn't gonna involve dropping anything on my head. Maybe. Maybe. Are you feeling strong? What'd you say about the gun show? I heard it's back in town. Let me see. Do you want a ticket? Do we look cool? <laughs> <laughs> well, so now we need to get it set with this hooked out on the end, tighten the strap to change the angle until I can use my calibrated eyeball to make sure that it's even with these two. I'm coming up the ladder. All right, so now if, if you can... This is working. Oh, that was too far, I think. Okay, icrometer says it's perfectly parallel with the other one. We're gonna pull a string to see because we really want this front edge to be perfectly straight. Because otherwise the solar panels are gonna go woo. Oh, you guys probably didn't know we were putting solar panels on there. Okay, it's perfect now. Oh, it's going up. Yeah, let's see. So if <gasps> I, yeah, that's it right there. Now the question is, am I strong enough to hold this piece up with one hand Hold it perfectly level, and then tack it with the other. <laughs> Ta-da! Nice job! And it's even level! Wow, that looks great! Thank you! You gave me permission to do this? Yeah. I think it's time to start framing out the rest of the roof. I so know. we have cross members to weld in now, eaves to frame. Whose idea was to build all this out of steel? Up we go. Yep. So, if our measurements are right, this should fit here. Like a glove. Okay, we're good. We have a lot of metal left to cut and weld into here. And it has me questioning why we're even using steel. It just, it's starting to feel like wood would have been so much easier. But then I start reflecting back on when we built the container workshop down there and I framed it all out of wood. And it was really difficult to figure out how to securely attach the wood to the containers. I ended up bolting through the roof of the container, through like a toe plate on some wall framing. And well, now I have leaks in those spots. It doesn't really matter in that situation because that's just a container workshop. But in this situation where we're planning on building a house inside of this, we can't have any leaks. So I don't want to penetrate this anywhere. And the only way that I can come up with to securely attach a roof and not have any penetrations is to build it out of steel. And then to me, it just felt a lot easier once we had already framed half of this thing out of steel to just do the entire thing out of steel rather than trying to switch to wood at the halfway point. So one roof purlin down, nine roof purlins to go, a bunch of ease framing, let's get to it. No whining. Yeah. Yeah. 
I always breathe this like sigh of relief once it's tacked in because it means it's probably not going to fall now. Probably. It also probably means it's in the right spot. Ooh, that Look looks at that. cool. Nice. But we just said the same thing. <laughs> Was I imitating you? Maybe. Passes my test. Should I hang from it? No. It's nice over here. You want to come sit down with me? Absolutely not. <laughs> it's day number whatever it is where we start getting antsy, which is like day number three. Yeah. Yesterday I ended the day saying we were making way more progress than I expected, but now I'm feeling like things are taking forever. I think we're going to push into this evening and try to get this half of the framing done. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this, but every evening we look out our living room window and there's always this ball of gnats right here and the way the sun lights them up, it's really pretty. But now we're just standing in a ball of gnats and they're flying all around us and they keep going in my eyes and my nose. I feel like we picked up some major momentum and we got this whole half of the roof framing done and now we're working on this half. Now that we're about done, I think we've got a system figured out. Good morning, everyone. I have to say, I am stoked with yesterday's progress. We hit that point in the early afternoon where I started feeling discouraged, like things were just starting to take forever. And then, bam! The roof framing's pretty much done. We're done up top here, all the welding's done, all the pieces are done, this is ready for sheet metal now. I did wanna explain something. You might've noticed that this cross member here is much smaller than the rest, and that's because my local steel yard was out of the two by three tubing, and I had to switch to inch and a half by two and a half to get the project done. It's one of those moments I find myself often in where you're at the steel yard trying to buy steel, and you're trying to figure out how to engineer and how to design your project to work based on what's in stock. Sometimes I wish I'd order things more ahead of time, but at the same time, here we are. This morning's project is I need to add two cross members over this porch cover that are gonna hold the solar panels on this porch. You know, solar panels like this, all the way across. It needs two cross members that will line up with the bolt holes in the solar panels. And I just realized that when we put this one in, we never actually check to make sure that it's perpendicular to the container, which means that I have no idea if it's parallel to the end ones, so there's a good chance that these cross members are gonna have to all four be a different length. 116 and a half, and, oh, 117 and a half. Yeah, this thing's not square at all to the building. I could fix it, I could cut these welds, I could slide it over, but, I think it's easier just to make these cross members different lengths and uh, note it as something to watch out for next time I build something. Where's my Sharpie? I don't know if you're like me, I am constantly losing my marker. 112 and a half. Another thing that I've learned over the years of working with steel is it's tempting to want to set up some kind of cut station like a table where I'm working at a comfortable height but what that ultimately means is that I spend a lot more time picking up and moving the heavy steel versus just bringing the saw to the trailer that I hold the material in. Now I never have to move the steel more than once. I can just cut it to a smaller length and then carry it away. Maybe like older me will not like 30 year old me for doing this to my back and to my knees. I don't know. Oh gosh. Well, that got a little sketchy. I don't know if you guys can see, the tube's all scratched up. Courtney's busy today with Oliver and uh, I thought I'd surprise her and get some more work done on this thing, so I'm working all by myself. I got the first one up, no problem, you guys saw that, and then the second one, I went to go clamp it into place and it fell, it slid down, it fell, it caught me on its way down, cut my hand in two places. That's kind of the downside of trying to do big heavy stuff by yourself. I've got a new method, I'm gonna put clamps up first so that when I put it up it can slide down onto the clamp so it can't fall but this is taking way longer without Courtney's help that's for sure. Okay here we go take two of getting the second cross member up with more safety in mind. Up 
upon the ladder, Riley goes. I made the joke in the last video. Court did music because she is Okay, there we go. That is much better. Now it can't fall. And now I just have to climb in the right spot. All right, just like our eave framing on the end of our roof structure, I also need some little kickers that kick out on the end of the solar structure to hold the very end of the solar panels so that our solar structure and our roof framing should end up even with each other. I don't have our solar panels yet, so I'm doing all of this based on the technical data sheet on their website. I hope that the reality matches the drawings. Today is actually Oliver's birthday. We're gonna go do some fun stuff as a family, spend some time with Oliver. So that's all I have time for today. I'll see you again tomorrow. So why are we building a house when we already have a house? And the answer is because of my mom. My mom lives really far away, so when she visits, she needs somewhere to stay. She's been staying downstairs in the shop, which works, but I want to give her so much more. And so we are actually building this tiny house for my mom. We're going to install it on the property, probably over here. And it means that when she visits, usually two weeks at a time, she's going to have her own space where she can relax, unwind, and just, I want her to know how thankful we are. She's actually visiting right now, but we're holding off to surprise her until it looks a little more like a tiny house. All right, boss, what's the plan? So the plan is that hopefully with your help, I don't drop him this time because it bit me. Well, it took me like six hours to do that by myself. I bet in 20 minutes we'll be done here. <laughs> what was your favorite part of Oliver's birthday? I really like taking Oliver on the hike. What was your favorite part of Oliver's birthday? Watching him eat a cupcake. Yeah? <laughs> in approximately 30 <laughs> seconds. That was really funny. He's just like his daddy. Yeah, he is. I feel like I should go on the roof. Yeah, maybe you should. I can hand it up to you. Ooh. Oh, gosh. Here we go. Nice job. Thank you. It looks so good. It's so fun at this point of the project to see like what I created on the computer to be coming together in real life. I know I say that a lot, but every single time we do it, it's a very satisfying moment. And look at it. While we wait for the roof metal to show up, we're gonna get started on cutting out the windows. If you're as excited about this build series as I am, make sure to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.